Welcome to Extraterrestrial Reality. Uh, last week it was realized that the uh, government office, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency, had released a 10 new videos. Well, some of them weren't news, but 10 videos were released uh, on their website uh, and the show purported UAP um, uh, there's good news and there's bad news with all with this release. Now, I know a lot of people in the UFO community were very excited about this. I looked at the videos and uh, I was not excited about it because it doesn't really show us much, does it? Uh, these videos do not show us much. In fact, some of the videos we've already seen before, now it's just, uh, for instance, the rubber duck video from 2021 that was, uh, uh, that was leaked. And then, of course, the other one, the Aguila, uh, video uh, from Puerto Rico that showed an object racing over a base and then dipping into the sea. We've seen that one before too. Uh, uh, I, I now those video. Well, that video the uh, is is pretty interesting. Uh, some of those videos are interesting. Uh, basically, the, most of these videos were not interesting at all. I think that one of them, sh one of the videos for sure shows a, somebody on a hang glider. Uh, there was another video which some people seemed to get excited about, but to me it looked like it could have been a plastic bag floating around or or maybe a a balloon. I don't know, uh, but it wasn't uh, really. Uh, Interesting, but like I said, the Aguadilla Puerto Rico video, uh, that one was now. Now we know it was from the government. We, you know, it was leaked before, but now it's being leaked as it's officially uh, released. Uh, so we know that one, which I think is interesting. I know that there's debunkers out there who say that it could be uh, lanterns, uh, wedding lanterns, Chinese wedding lanterns. Uh, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't think anybody really could tell for sure. As far as the rubber duck video. Uh, that was leaked two years ago, which is now officially released. Uh, now that one, uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, could be anything. But again, the reason, the, the bad news here is that you're not really seeing anything in these videos. These videos really prove nothing. Uh, absolutely zero. Uh, these aren't the kind of videos uh, people in the UFO community are waiting for. We are waiting for the real deal kind of videos. Uh, the videos that we know exist, uh, videos that were talked about by people like Lou Elizondo in the past, uh, videos that you could actually see beings on board uh, that aren't human. They're, they're the kind of videos that I'm waiting to see. Uh, this doesn't do. This does nothing. These kind of videos absolutely do nothing at all uh, to uh, move the needle whatsoever. Uh, these are some of them I think are pr probably most certainly prosaic. Now, the one video, the 10th video, for instance, that shows something floating around a, a, a base or uh, uh, somewhere near the border, I guess, and the, it looks like it could have been a balloon or a bag. Now, some people said that the, the thing disappeared and then reappeared. I don't think it disappeared at all. I think the only reason it disappears toward the end, uh, if you look at that video closely, it looks like there's a bluff there. and You can see actually a blockade along a road, and, and it looks like it it dips un, un, uh, under behind there so you can't see it and then it then it flies back up again that could have been a bag flying around it could have been a balloon it could have been anything but the, the point is is that all of these things in these videos uh for the most part except maybe for the aguadilla uh video and the and the well, the ones that we've already that were already leaked i don't know what they are i mean i know that the debunkers will tell you it's chinese lanterns uh, and the rubber duck video, we have no idea what that is, but it could be anything. It could be something uh, prosaic. We just don't know. These videos are not good enough. These aren't ready for prime time. They really do nothing. Again, some one of the videos was most certainly somebody in a hang glider. Uh, I was not impressed by them. Some of them were just white dots off in the distance. Well, I don't know what that is. How could anybody say, oh, that's alien? Because no, you can't. You can't say that because we don't know what it is. It's too, too far away. It doesn't really do anything. This does, these videos do not move the needle. There is absolutely nothing whatsoever to get excited about, nothing to call, call home about, nothing at all. Uh, so there's nothing there. And to me, all this does, it just uh, continues what, what these videos do. It just allows, it gives debunkers, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 the opportunity to find more things, e easy things to point out. Oh, this could be a hang glider. Oh, this is nothing. See, we're all jumping to conclusions over nothing. It just allows this whole this whole routine that we're stuck in to continue. That's all it is. It's just nothing. It's nothing. This offers nothing. These videos offered nothing. I'll leave the link, and you could check out all ten videos from the from the government website, uh, if you so please, and you could uh, try to figure it out and see. For me, right, this is this doesn't this is this doesn't do anything. 
I mean, my own sighting was was with was within 20 feet. The object I saw was within 20 feet and only uh, two and a half stories off the ground back in 1994. Right? That, that that's the kind of stuff we need to see, not this far away stuff. Not we don't know. It, things could be blown in the winds in some of these things. Could be a piece of junk flying around. Could be a balloon. Could be a hang glider. I mean, there's excuses you, upon excuses you could come up with. It could be anything. Maybe some of them are extraterrestrial, but we just don't know because they're too far away. That's why we need the good stuff. That's why we not only do we need up close and personal style videos, which I'm certain exist. I'm certain that they exist, right? Uh, not only do we need that stuff, uh, so we also need more stuff than that. We need to have the bodies from the government uh, carted out in, in, in a uh, congressional hearing or something. And we need to be shown the places where they're reverse engineering these things. And of course, uh, that's the bad, the bad news about this. The bad news about these videos is that they don't move the needle at all. They don't do anything. Don't be fooled, right? This is just uh, something to, to placate the UFO community, right? Uh, something to get everyone talking, but what's there to talk about? There's nothing there. You can't see anything. There's nothing there, and we know that there is stuff out there, and that's the good news. The good news is, is that this is nothing, and it's just a ploy by people within the government to fool you, to fool you. See, 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 see? No, they got better stuff than this, and they're hiding it. They're obviously hiding it. I'll just read a little bit of this article here uh, from Daily Mail from a couple days ago. It says here, government secret UFO dump, border security quietly releases tranche of 10 videos of mysterious mysterious craft whizzing around U.S. skies as uh, ex-intelligence officer says they are a threat. Yeah, balloons are a threat? Bags flying around in the wind a threat? I don't think so. Anyway, it says here, a tranche of uh, UFO videos, including never-before-seen footage, has been quietly released by federal law enforcement, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the agency responsible for keeping terrorists and their weapons out of the country, uploaded 10 videos that appear to show craft moving in strange ways in our skies. The videos were released on August 9th without warning, a press release, or much in the way of context, only to be discovered by UFO enthusiasts and online sleuths earlier this week. It says the videos document a fighter jet pursued by an apparent baffling flying orb as well as something that appears to be a propeller-powered hang glider and yet another apparent floating orb hovering this time near a parked 16-wheeler truck. That's what they're talking about there is video number 10 on the list, uh, which basically shows what I think is probably a balloon or a bag or something caught in the wind, and it's just floating around, and it, that doesn't show us. And it could be, maybe it is extraterrestrial, but you can't tell in that video. That video is junk. Uh, there's no if we if, if the camera was closer maybe we would have been able to tell what it was or maybe would have would have known it was some sort of orb or anything or something like that something mysterious but there's not enough information in that video to make any sort of uh, uh, conclusion but I think it was probably just nothing I think it was probably a bag or a balloon or something to that effect doesn't make me right but that's just my opinion. Anyway, it says here, but the enigmatic nature of the drop, which offered little detail regarding the times and locations of these sightings, plus more than a few sweeping redactions, has left more questions than answers. Well, I, I'll tell you what, didn't for me, right? There, there was, it, there, there are no uh, questions, or right? the, the answer is this: is that they're just trying to buffalo you. This is all nonsense. This is giving you the junk, the junk that that shows you not much there. Doesn't show you much going on. That's all this is. Anyway, continuing here, it says the quiet video drop follows rising tensions within the corridors of power in Washington on the once taboo subject of UFOs. Open congressional hearings, federal legislation, and even brand new government offices have now been dedicated openly to the investigation of these aerial mis mysteries, with at least one former senior U.S. intelligence official calling the strange sightings a national security issue. Yeah, uh, it's a national security issue for sure, and... Uh, not only that, but it's something that we are, are no government in the world really has control over. And that's one of the reasons why the uh, craniums, the brains that would, uh, contained inside the craniums behind the secret will not tell you because they believe they are smarter than you. So they'll show you out, they'll show you this junk, right? And try to palm you off with that, right? But re reality, they're sitting on the good stuff. 
They're sitting on the good stuff and you're not getting to see it, even though your tax dollars is paying for all the research and, and, and uh, the, the recovery of, of crafts and, and the study of alien bodies in secret for decade upon decade upon decade. That's where tax dollars have been going, right? But guess what? You don't get to know about it because they think you're too stupid. Instead, they're going to show you these videos and, and videos in which debunkers could look at and, and say that they're anything and it doesn't matter because it, because they don't show anything. There's nothing in here for every, anyone to get excited about. Uh, anyway, continuing with this article here, it says, but perhaps, excuse me, uh, the videos were released on a dedicated site for agency records made public via request under the United States Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA. But perhaps most significant, significantly, the release confirms, at least tacitly, the veracity of a heavily scrutinized 2013 thermal UFO video leaked to UFO researchers in 2015. And it says, for the first time since the leak, the April 25th, 2013 Aguadilla, Puerto Rico UFO video first investigated by by the scientific coalition for uap studies has now been confirmed by the united states government as genuinely un unidentified okay it's unidentified uh but doesn't mean that it's you know we don't know what it is it could be extraterrestrial we don't really know and we're never really going to know because there's not enough information in that video uh, there's other videos, though, like I have pointed out before, that would show you uh, enough information that would end this debate. There are videos out there, I can assure you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, there's there's things on film and things on video that the United States government has in its possession right now that would end this debate once and for all. Once and for all, it would send the debunkers fleeing to their, to their rat, rat holes. It would end it. It would end it all. Right, but they're not giving you that stuff. They're giving you this junk. I don't know if it's part of a slow disclosure or they're just trying to pretend that there's nothing to it and they're trying to put uh, Pandora back inside the box. They're trying to sh shove the toothpaste back into the tool. Whatever they're doing, right? This is nonsense. Anyway, asked by NBC News, Chris Mellon, a former official with the Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, described the release as very significant. This will help the public understand what our military personnel are encountering all over the world, Mellon said. We're getting on the Defense Department side 50 to 100 UFO reports per month, and this is happening globally. It's happening overseas. It's happening off the East Coast and the West Coast, he elaborated. This will help people better understand why Congress takes the issue seriously and why it's a national security issue. While Mellon praised U.S. Customs' show of openness and transparency with the official release of these 10 videos, America's dedicated community of UFO skeptics were less impressed. And then, of course, it goes to Mick West, uh, the owner and operator of Metabunk, uh, and he doesn't give these any credence because why should he give him any credence? There's, he could debunk. They're easy to debunk for a debunker. There's nothing in there. There's, you don't see any beings. There's nothing up close and personal. I don't know what Mellon's talking about here. These videos are garbage. They don't show you anything. Somebody in a hang glider flying around? Come on. A bag floating over a, 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 some military site? I mean, what the heck? Come on. This is garbage. This is nothing here. I mean, you can't tell. There's, you can't tell what these things are because they're too far away. We need the up-close-and-personal stuff. The best one I've seen from the government, as far as I'm concerned, was the gimbal video. I think that was a flying saucer that you saw there. I think that that's what it was. These other things that they've been releasing, they're trying to, they're, they're trying to put you to sleep. That's what this is. I mean, put it this way. This was a few days now. This has been out there. This, this, these UFO videos have been out for a few days now. This not, did, did, it change, did they change the world? No, they did not. Not even close. Not even close. There's not, there's not enough information that, that was captured in these videos to, to paint uh, any sort of picture. right? Uh, to me, some of these things could be what the debunkers are saying they are. That's the problem. But again, the good news is, is that there are things out there. There are... Uh, uh, there, there's most certainly really good stuff on film and video that's been sitting in vaults and that, that there's no way uh, they're, 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 they're people who are in charge are taking uh, really a dish, a extra caution to make sure that they don't get leaked right because uh, like I believe that Lou Elizondo when he said that he saw video there video there's video out there that exists that shows the beings operating some of these craft there has to be there's no question in my mind that there's video available like that that would end this debate once and for all uh, stuff not even from recent times if there's stuff from the 40s 50s that they have right that's been captured on film back in those days that would for certain end this debate but they're not showing this because they're playing games with you because they don't think that you can handle the truth that's what this that's what's going on here folks they don't they don't they think you're too dumb from their viewpoint you're too dumb 
right? On top of that, they're reverse engineering all this stuff and they want to keep it secret because it's all about power and control and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I guess I'm going to move on here because this, this story, you know, again, I, I, I'm i sorry. I know a lot of people out there were looking at this and thinking, oh, look, this is great and everything. But you know what? I'm sorry. It's not great. It's not, it, does, it doesn't move the needle. It has not moved the needle. If, if put it this way, if this stuff was was going to move the needle this would have this would have stopped the presses we, the the news media would have been talking about it on even the mainstream news the, the 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 dumb mainstream news would have been talking about this for the last four or five days still they would still be talking about it, but there's nothing there to really talk about and again some of the stuff we already know we already saw and it's still we still don't know really what it is uh, so it's not good enough it's just not good enough anyway uh moving forward there's another article I want to talk about here from Michael Schellenberger, uh, uh, who we know has uh, written some good UFO articles uh, recently, and also Andrew Mohar and Phoebe Smith. And this was in public.substack. And the headline reads, Dozens of government UFO whistleblowers have given testimony to Congress, Pentagon, and Inspectors General, say sources. Uh, but it says here, despite the growing number of whistleblowers, lead- leaders of the military and intelligence community are fighting uh, greater disclosure they don't want to see yes, they're, they're still fighting it behind the scenes so this is this this perfectly segs uh into what i was just talking about we we're just talking about how, how these videos really don't show you anything and yet and then we find out that they're 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 fighting behind the scenes because they don't want you to know anything they want to keep you in the dark for as long as they can for whatever reason because they think you're too stupid to deal with it plus they have their other uh uh, a- ambitions with regards to these uh, recovered craft and alien bodies. They rather they rather sit on that because that makes them better than you because they have more knowledge than you. Anyway, continuing here, it says, in August, shortly after U.S. government UFO whistleblower David Grush gave testimony to Congress about crashed spacecraft and alien biologics, many observers wondered how much credence to put in his testimony. After, after all, Grush is just a single individual. The other two individuals who testified before Congress were uh, the former Navy pilots who said they had no evidence of a government program to retrieve and reverse engineer spacecraft of exotic and apparently non-human origin. But at least 30 other whistleblowers working for the federal government or government contractors have given testimony or a protected disclosure to the Office of Intelligence Community Inspector General, which are ICIG, the Defense Department Inspector General, which is the DODIG, or to Congress over the last several months, according to multiple sources interviewed by public. When told that whistleblowers had come forward to share information similar to that shared by Grush with Congress, Mick West, the prominent skeptic of UFOs, said, it'd be very interesting, you know, more people saying the same thing independently makes it more likely to be true. Uh, And yet the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, Thomas Monheim, on September 15th, appeared to deny in a letter to Congress that his office was investigating these claims. Monheim said that his office, quote, has not conducted any audit, inspection, evaluation, or review of alleged UAP programs within responsibility authority of the DNI that would enable a fulsome response, end quote. Uh, now the whole thing is here is uh, was he playing a game of semantics like we think that sometimes these people do and that's what somebody said suggests there we'll, we'll get into that it says here but the way Monheim worded his response suggests he gave himself some wiggle room Matthew Pines a civilian intelligence analyst noted last week that the official that quote the official taxonomy for the uh, intelligence community inspector general activities includes audits investigations inspections and reviews it is curious that an investigation is not denied the investigations division is structurally separate from the audit and inspections and evaluation divisions so there you go so is he playing a game of semantics we don't know they're playing games with the public with words word salad throw say all this stuff make it sound like we're not doing anything but we won't say investigations don't say investigations because we really are investigating we can't we can't tell the public that The fact that dozens of whistleblowers have come forward is not evidence of extraterrestrial life, nor of a government conspiracy to cover up 
uh, retrieval or reverse engineering program. And not all of the whistleblowers may be reporting evidence of UAP. Some may simply be reporting illegal or unethical behavior related to UAP programs. But the sources who asked to remain anonymous and are all in a position to know told public that in addition to the whistleblowers reporting wrongdoing, between 30 to 50 government employees or contractors have gone to the Department of Defense's All Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARROW, to offer testimony about UAP. Some witnesses slash whistleblowers are coming forward directly to ARROW, some to the Department of Defense Inspector General, some to the Intelligence Community Inspector General, and some to Congress, said Nick Pope, a UAP expert who worked on the issue for the UK's Ministry of Defense. Many have speculated as to whether Grush and other UAP whistleblowers or witnesses might be part of a United States government disinformation campaign. Now that's that's hogwash disinformation. They're going to put out you're going to have Grush go lying to Congress as part of some disinformation campaign, and when it's all over, he gets thrown in prison for lying. Oh yeah, I'll sacrifice. Hey, my name's David Grush. Let me do this. I'll be one. I'll be one of these uh, misinformation guys. I'll go and testify to Congress under oath and to the Inspector General under oath, right? And then I'll then I'll go to jail for five years just for for just for the country, just to do that for the country, so people forget about UFOs. Think about how absurd that is. That's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, continuing. It says here, a former U.S. Air Force intelligence officer working at Kirtland Air Force Base in the 1980s uh, through to the first decade of this century admitted to British journalist Mark Pilkington and others that he spread disinformation about UFOs with the aim of misleading civilian UFO investigators in order to cover up both United States military as well as non-human technology programs. But... Experts interviewed by public say it is unlikely that people waging a disinformation campaign would do it through the office of the inspector general since doing so puts individuals at risk. Exactly. Puts them at risk. Why would anybody be so stupid to, to be part of a disinformation campaign and go lie into Congress and inspector generals when, when, when the end result is going to be five years in jail or, or a $10,000 fine because that's what it would be. It says here, con con continuing here. Uh, Marek von Rennenkamp, a former Pentagon appointee under the Obama administration, said, uh, considering this, the broader context to include Grush's allegations, previous reporting by public, and the extraordinary legislation working its way through Congress, I find it hard to believe that so many inf individuals would open themselves up to significant legal, legal jeopardy by willfully lying to inspector generals. Exactly. Why would they do that? I'm stopping right there for a second. Why would they do that? They wouldn't do that. That's ridiculous. Anyway, continuing. Knowingly giving false testimony to the uh, intelligence community ins uh, inspector general is punishable by fines up to 10 grand imprisonment for up to five years or both if found guilty of lying to congress grush could face up to five years in prison so there's not he's not lying he's telling the truth at the same time and in addition and that just means stop there for a second in addition the other people the other whistleblowers they're telling the truth because if there's 30 to 50 other people talking behind the scenes they're telling it under oath then that means they're all going to go to jail along with grush that's absurd to think that it's not some disinf if there's any disinformation campaign it's from the ones who aren't testifying that's where the disinformation campaign is it's from the pentagon itself and the secret control group and all these debunkers who I think I'm starting to uh, believe that some of them are actually might be working for the government the way they act. It says here, at the same time, the history of past government disinformation campaigns in general, and as, and as they specifically rate, relate to UAP, involves the mixing of accurate information and inaccurate information, making it difficult or impossible to feel confident in understanding the meaning of fundamental elements of the phenomenon. That's nicely put exactly true they do mix it up they love mixing it up because that confuses everybody because they don't know what's true and what isn't continuing it says that reality and the need to prevent government officials from deliberately misleading journalists policymakers, and the public make greater transparency and disclosure essential both ufo skeptics and believers agree yes that's true uh, except i do believe that some ufo skeptics the debunkers for, uh, for instance i don't know some of them i'm not sure which ones i think some of them might be paid agents Right, either that or just total idiots or to total trolls and morons. I don't know. I, Stephen Greenstreet comes to mind. Anyway, <clears throat> it says here, it's either that dozens of highly cleared officials are in the grip of a, of an enduring bizarre delusion, 
are winning participants to a broad scale and long, long running psychological deception, said Pines, or they are relaying factual inf information on extraordinary covert programs. I'll take the, the latter there. They are relaying factual information on extraordinary covert programs because, again, as uh, I've said many, many times before, and as many UFO researchers will tell you, uh, there is most certainly a cover up ongoing for many many decades now uh there there's been people who have stepped forward over the decades that are not with us anymore that have talked about this about the cover-up that there is most certainly uh, uh covert operations ongoing with uh, regard to recovering uh crashed alien uh, vehicles as well as uh bodies and keeping the whole thing secret from the public Anyway, continuing here, it says, said West, I can understand why people would think ufology is frivolous and a waste of government money and we shouldn't be looking into it, but they don't think we shouldn't release the secret information after crashed alien craft, you know, something everybody wants to see. I uh, see here, there's another article, there's a second article in a row I'm reading here that has Mick West as a prominent uh, commenter on here. When the guy, all he does is sit back and, and make a fool out of the whole subject. Uh, he doesn't take it seriously, so all he does is uh, t tell you when it... Uh, debunk the whole thing he doesn't believe in any of the he, he'll, he'll debunk easy stuff stay away from the hard stuff so this is all nonsense why they have why is this guy like an expert here he's not anyway continuing here it says testimony has included both first-hand and second-hand reports of crash retrieval and reverse engineering programs by united states russian and chinese governments the testing of materials obtained from retrieved craft active and ongoing government disinformation operations kinetic military action with uap contact and collaboration with non-human intelligence and nhis and the successful reverse engineering of a triangle shaped craft with unconventional propulsion yes Yes, so that's what we're talking about here. Uh, there's reverse engineering. It's been going on a long time. A lot of us had already known this uh, before David Grush or any, you know, started telling Congress what he said, what he told Congress. But uh, this is all, again, it's all a bunch of nonsense. There's people that don't want this information out for whatever reason. I think one of the re one of the big reasons that I've been saying this recently is because. There's, got, there's already a distrust in government. However, there's going to be a greater distrust in government once this truth of the extraterrestrial reality finally is made public. Because once that truth comes out, everyone's going to know uh, people who didn't don't believe in this whatsoever right now, they're going to know, all of them are going to know that they've been getting lied to for a long time. So my... Uh, <laughs> well, my solution to that, right, is make sure you have a great excuse why you were lying. Uh, make sure it's, you figure it out. Come up with something. There are, there's mo most certainly some good excuses on there. And you got to find a really good one and stick to it. Get everyone on board. Tell them, hey, hey, we don't know what they're going to do. We had to keep it quiet. We, they, we don't know. Let me tell you what. I'm going to tell you something. The truth of the matter is this. They don't know. They don't know. There's no way they know it all. There's no possible chance they know all of it. There are things going on here on this world uh, involving non-human intelligent beings, right? That we nobody knows. We don't know what they're up to. How could we possibly know what they're up to at all times? There's no way. There's most certainly something going on with the greys and the reptilians and the insectoids. They're doing something, right? We don't know what they're doing. It might not be any good. It might be some sort of a hybridization program with the end result they're taking over the planet. Or maybe maybe what they're doing is something good. I don't know, right? But they're doing something. And then on top of it, there's all different kinds of other creatures that are coming here. The more you do research on this, the more you find that there are all sorts of kinds of weird creatures that people come in contact with over the decades. There's a whole bunch of different things coming here all the time, and we don't know what they're up to. There's cattle, and then on top of it, there's cattle mutilations, there's disappearances. I believe that some people who disappear are taken, are whisked off this planet by extraterrestrials for whatever reason, for study, for whatever, right? Maybe they, they use them as, as just like we, we use uh, 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 lab rats. Maybe that's what we're being used for. But it's, some of it's definitely not good i could tell you right now right if you're if you're not if you're somebody out there who hasn't been studying this i could tell you right now one aspect of this uh, alien presence here it's not good there's no question about it obviously not there are people who have disappeared because of ufos never to be seen again i believe that some of the a lot of these disappearances the thousands of disappearances that are happening every year right uh, some of them i believe are are due to extraterrestrials they just take people away for whatever reason turn them into lab rats somewhere else and then discard their remains that's what I think happens. 
Uh, I mean, look what let's look what's going on with cattle mutilations. We've been talking about this for uh, almost sixty years now, right? They still there's still no explanation, D despite all the people out there uh, telling you, well, it's just uh, it's predators, it's the government, Ooh, the government doing secret stuff, and they don't want you to know. That's a total nonsense, right? Or satanic cults or something like that. But guess what? None of those, nobody ever got caught yet. Nobody ever got caught, right? We're almost we're going on sixty years here. No one got caught yet. Guess what? It's aliens in a lot of those cases beings from other worlds that are doing this that's who's doing it some of the things they're here up to here right are definitely not good maybe some of the stuff they're up to oh, is good right maybe they are helping people maybe some of them are healing people and doing good things but there's another half of it it's bad but so what hey the truth of the matter is they're here right whatever they're up to you got to let the people know what's going on enough of this nonsense enough of this cover-up all right moving on finally i'm going to talk about a story uh, this is from uh, the Express out of the UK, and the headline reads, Man who hacked NASA says truth about aliens will never be disclosed. Well, I'm going to tell you, one way or the other, it's going to get disclosed. One way or the other, the truth will come out. Just I, I don't believe that headline one bit. And uh, the guy who's saying this, Gary McKinnon, right, this uh, Scottish uh, IT expert, right, he's, he, he hacked the United States government years ago. Uh, he's wrong with his opinion because one way or another it's going to happen. There's going to be some sort of a disclosure. But let's get, let's read the story and see what Gary McKinnon has to say. It says here, a man who was accused of the biggest military computer hack of all time by officials in the United States and claimed to have found evidence of contact with non-terrestrial beings and technology as a result believes the public will never be told the truth about UFOs, UAP, and aliens. Scottish IT expert Gary McKinnon, now 57, illegally gained access to the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Pentagon, and NASA computers in 2002. He spent nearly a decade fighting extradition to the United States where he would have faced up to 70 years in jail if convicted. He became something of a cause celebre, uh, with Boris Johnson and David Cameron among the politicians who fought to prevent his extradition, and rock stars including Pink Floyd's David Gilmour, Sting, Peter Gabriel, and Chrissy Hind all vo voiced their support for him. Uh, his extradition was eventually blocked in 2012 on human rights grounds after he was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome by then Home Secretary Theresa May in 2012. Speaking after his hack, McKinnon claimed to have seen thousands of images and documents that showed alien life and technology were here on Earth. These included a smooth cigar-shaped craft with geodesic domes above the Earth on a NASA PC and on a U.S. Navy network, an Excel spreadsheet of non-terrestrial officers, ships, and military military materials on fleet to fleet transfers however mckinnon claims that 21 years ago his internet connection was too slow to download the evidence and that the nasa hack was discovered and blocked by an employee before he had time to act now, let me just stop here for one second we don't know what he really saw he could say what he's saying here but he doesn't have the proof unfortunately uh if he was to, if he's telling the truth then it would be fantastic if, he, if somehow he was able to download that evidence and show it to the world but unfortunately that didn't happen so now we're left to wonder is this guy telling us the truth or is he just making this up i don't know uh, so you have to really wonder you really don't know anyway continuing here it says now with mexico's congress being shown two allegedly non-human alien corpses and the White House admitting that UFOs and UAP are a real issue that are impacting U.S. Air Force, believers are hopeful that there will soon be full disclosure of the truth they think is out there. Well, let me tell you something, folks. It is out there. For better or worse, it's out there. There's no question about it. There's no doubt. If you're a non-believer, guess what? You're in for a big surprise. Big surprise. But McKinnon, who now lives in Leicester, uh, I can't pronounce this, in Leicester, and runs an SEO company, believes these hopes are futile. He bluntly told the U.S. Sun, they will never tell us the truth. Earlier this month, NASA released the findings of its year-long study into UAP. The space agency said there was no evidence of alien life. However, McKinnon, who nicknames NASA the National Association of Space Actors, was dismissive of the report. He told the U.S. Sun, as usual, they said nothing on balance. And when pressed, they just repeated their noncommittal statement. We'll never get any truth from military institutions, which NASA is, regardless of the fact that it pretends to be a civilian institution. Okay, yeah, you know what? I have to agree with him there because I know, I, I, I am certain that there are people within NASA who know all about this. And they're a part of the cover-up. They're told to do to, to not tell anybody the truth. When when uh, uh, some NASA technician or an astronaut sees something, they're told, "Hey, 
don't you say nothing this is top secret that's what's going on so when you hear them every time i see government officials coming to a podium like i said recently i know i said this recently in the podcast every time you see them coming up and they and they tell you that they don't have any evidence right they're lying right they're lying now some of them might not know that they're lying some of them are lying we don't know which ones are which right but that's the case either some of them don't know they're lying they're lying because somebody told them this is all we got right or some of them are lying because they do know and they're just not telling you the truth that's how it is you might as well just live with it anyway he had previously told the sun it's a fact that there are objects we don't understand flying around in our skies it's also a fact that there are scientific intelligence and military departments that study these objects nasa administrator bill nelson has however vowed the u.s space agency will share its uap data with more transparency hold on for a second i have to do something <laughs> All right, continuing. And he insisted that NASA will disclose to the public any evidence of alien life, if, if is ever found. Let me, pardon me again. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nelson's promise was dismissed by McKinnon, who has long believed that the agency is hiding the truth about aliens. He was inspired to hack for hidden info after listening to former NASA contractor Donna Hare, who went public at the Disclosure Project press conference in Washington, D.C. in 2001. She claimed that while working in Building 8 at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, she walked into a photo lab and saw technical staff airbrushing UFOs out of photos before they were released to the public. She also, I remember this woman, and I'll tell you what, she was telling the truth because that, that's the kind of stuff that they're doing. They're keeping this, the government, they're, they're under, under orders to keep this stuff hidden from the public for whatever reason while they study it secretly because their brain, they could, they could deal with it, but you can't. She also claimed that NASA used Santa Claus as a code name for three UFOs seen on the moon during lunar landings. Yeah, Santa Claus. NASA refuses to respond to conspiracy theories and UFO claims, but express... Uh, has previously asked to comment on Mrs. Miss Hare's allegations. Well, they're not commenting, unfortunately. They don't want to talk about that stuff because they're, 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 because if they try to talk about Miss Hare's stuff, then they're they're stumbling over their words, uh, stumbling, bumbling. It's not true. It's not true. Oh, they can't help themselves. They're being told somebody. Somebody's the puppet master. There's a puppet master organization hovering over NASA, over the, over the Department of the all over all of it, right? There's some some puppet master group that controls this information. Somebody gave them the power. We don't know who, right? It's it's who knows who's comp it's comprised of some people within the uh, military industrial complex and some people within the Pentagon, and everybody else is told they're not allowed to know anything about this. Only little uh, aspects of it. It's all compartmentalized. It's all a bunch of nonsense nonsense and they're keeping this secret they're continuing to keep it a secret we, we could have all this stuff right now if they if they really wanted to end this right they could release all this stuff right now and we could have this all this whole debate ended because let me tell you there as far as i'm concerned right it's real i know that for a fact I, i've done enough research to know and plus i had my own experiences just like a lot of us out there have right we know once you know that's it and then you know that these people are lying to your face it's this stupid, dumb game that they keep playing and they don't stop. And I'm sick of it. Everybody should be sick of it. It's like, the, I, I know it sounds like a broken record sometimes on here, but what else could I do? What else could I say? All this stuff is garbage. The videos from last week, all of this stuff. Anyway, I want to say thanks a lot for joining me. Until next time.